What a screw up. What a woman. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 controversial casting decisions in video game movies. Hmm, what do you know? Looks like I'm going to the ball after all. For this list, we're looking at casting decisions in movies based on video games that tarnish the movie's quality, as well as how it showed gamers that Hollywood does not understand the medium. Which of these casting choices had you the most confused? Let us know in a civil manner in the comments below. Number 10. Sean Ferris as Kyo Kusanagi and Maggie Q as Mai Shiranoi, the King of Fighters. Hello, Mai. Why did you pick this freezing hole? A live-action adaptation of SNK's hit fighting game series already sounds like a bad idea. The King of Fighters has always had its own anime charm to its visuals and animation, so one would want to retain that. The least they could do is get the characters' appearances correct, right? Alas, even that was botched as Mai was rewritten as a CIA agent and Kyo as a biker dude. However, what was more infuriating for hardcore fans was how Sean Ferris, a Texan man, and Maggie Q, a Vietnamese woman, were playing Japanese characters. This casting just showed that the folks working on this movie had no idea what a King of Fighters even was. It's just some fighting tournament the kids play, right? Number 9. Most of the cast. DOA, Dead or Alive. What do you know? Looks like I'm going to the ball after all. We're just going to warn you now. There's going to be a few more fighting game entries on here, and DOA Dead or Alive was another annoyingly butchered endeavor. Once again, character ethnicities were completely ignored, as Japanese ninja girl Ayane was played by Norwegian actress Natasha Malti, and Russian mercenary Bayman was played by Australian Derek Boyer. It's bad enough that most everyone's acting felt lazy and uninteresting, but you couldn't even get actors who matched each character's ethnicity? Oh well, as long as we get the volleyball game in bikinis right, it'll get butts in seats. At least Kevin Nash was a solid choice as Bass Armstrong. Wrestling and really fighting now, is it? Or pretending to believe you. I sure would like to be. Son Dad. Number 8. Everyone. The Angry Birds movie. <sighs> okay, well, sometimes when I get upset, I uh, have been known to uh, blow up. So like, uh, like what, like you get mad, you mean? Well, no, I literally blow up. Many rolled their eyes as soon as the Angry Birds movie was announced to be in development. The question from there was, how bad could it be? Well, really bad. Much of the main cast consisted of Saturday Night Live cast members, and the overwhelming reliance on one mega popular sketch series as acclaim shows how little confidence there was in the movie. And now for our last gift to you. Shut up and fix my house! <laughs> we don't know him. For the average moviegoer, this was a mind-numbing family flick to entertain the kids. For the gaming community, it was another example of how Hollywood just didn't get video games, even the casual mobile market. Well, you know what? I guess you win! Number 7. Jean-Claude Van Damme as Guile. Street Fighter, the movie. You're all under arrest. If a martial artist like Jean-Claude Van Damme were to be cast in a Street Fighter movie today, folks would be over the moon. However, since Street Fighter the movie, Van Damme and Guile have gone together as well as peanut butter and horseradish. I'll help you. And then, I'll make them pay. In the games, Guile is rather stoic and not so expressive. He looks to be a no-nonsense guy. Van Damme's version, on the other hand, is just so freaking boring and stiff that he comes off like more of a supporting character and not the main protagonist. We want Guile, not generic military man. Sure. But only if you wear that dress. Number 6. Angelina Jolie as Lara Croft. Lara Croft Tomb Raider and Lara Croft Tomb Raider The Cradle of Life. Illuminati. While we try to be open about who is playing what character, there are some instances where it feels like certain actors are casted for different reasons, primarily marketing. 
One instance of this was the first attempt at Tomb Raider as a movie franchise, where Angelina Jolie played the daring Lara Croft. Give it up. Are you going to shoot me, Alex? It's no surprise that this came to fruition. Jolie was one of the biggest stars in Hollywood in the early 2000s and known for her sex appeal. She was also not British, nor did she look anything like our favorite explorer. Thank goodness Alicia Vikander nailed her performance in the 2018 reboot. <laughs> They're not clock hands. Number 5. Kelly Overton as Christy Montero, Tekken. So that was against the rules. Not if you don't get caught. As with Angelina Jolie, this casting felt like it was done more for the sex appeal rather than staying true to the character. In the Tekken franchise, Christy Montero is a flirtatious and carefree Brazilian capoeira fighter who tries to win the King of Iron Fist to save her sick grandfather. In the movie, she's more of a party girl played by an American woman who quickly swoons over Jin Kazama for no legitimate reason. Three days ago, I got gangbang is trying to kill me. And today you're a celebrity. Get used to it. While Overton manages to work with the material given to her, the problem here was how Jin is incredibly dependent on her and how she sexes it up in the nightclub scene. It's extremely unfitting and disrespectful to the character, though we can't entirely fault Overton. He won. Number 4. Jake Gyllenhaal as Prince Dastin, Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. Uh, only a princess would think she could have one of Sandstorm. There have been a handful of movie adaptations that have come under fire for whitewashing characters of specific ethnicities. In the world of gaming, the biggest one was this. For a movie based on the Prince of Persia games, one would probably want actors of Persian descent in some way. Alas, the entire cast was composed of American and British actors. Nazam wishes to go back in time and undo what he did. Not save my father, let him die. Then he would be king for a lifetime. Gyllenhaal was specifically outed considering he was playing the lead role as the prince. This would generate quite a bit of backlash from gaming and movie fans alike, and would serve as an example of whitewashing. Even Gyllenhaal would admit years later that he was not cut out for the role. I have some explaining to do, Tuss. I... No. No. Number 3. Kevin Hart as Roland, Kate Blanchett as Lilith, and Jack Black as Claptrap. Borderlands. Mordecai should have what you need. He's camped out near the preserve. I think he needs your help with something. We expected a Borderlands movie to get a little weird, but not on a meta level like this. Rather than staying true to characters, star power appears to have taken over in the Borderlands movie, a real Hollywood tradition as we've seen. Hey, Mom! No, I was just saying I named a stalker after you. It's easy to enjoy most films featuring Kevin Hart, Jack Black, or Kate Blanchett, but these are not the people we'd imagine to play a muscled mercenary, an annoying robot, and a young lady with attitude and mystical powers. Really? Kevin Hart playing a serious dude like Roland? Gearbox CEO Randy Pitchford has tried hyping up the movie a few times, but we remain skeptical of this casting until the movie is out. Hi man, I think Roland wanted you to go check out the town of Overlook, see if you can help the people there or whatever. Number 2. Tom Holland as Nathan Drake and Mark Wahlberg as Sully. Uncharted. Oh, man, is that an ugly friggin' thing? What is it, some kind of weapon? No, no, it's a, a perba. Before there was ever talk of an Uncharted movie, many of us had imagined Mark Wahlberg taking the role of Nathan Drake. Then, the movie was legitimately announced, and he was cast as Sully. What? Ah, Jesus, you stink. Yeah, not half as bad as that cigar. Once again, star power seems to have taken top priority as Tom Holland took the role of our wisecracking hero. Folks have not been too happy about this younger Nate approach to the IP, and Holland's description of the character does not match with the description we've seen from Nolan North in the games. Very tough, very stoic? Those aren't exactly words to describe Nathan Drake, and we doubt he was like this even at a younger age. See you on the other side. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Chris Pratt as Mario, Untitled Super Mario Movie He's so cool. Mario will be talking a lot in the movie. In a September 2021 Direct, Nintendo announced several cast members for the Super Mario movie. Several choices felt out of place, but the biggest was Chris Pratt as Mario himself. 
Ignoring recent controversies with the actor, many were left confused as Mario's own voice actor, Charles Martinet, is in the movie, yet doesn't voice Mario? Just cameos? The problem here is that folks only know Mario with Martinet's voice, and Mario doesn't do a lot of talking in the games outside of Wahoo! At least Seth Rogen and Jack Black make some sense as Donkey Kong and Bowser, and have potential for somewhat accurate portrayals. But Chris Pratt as Mario? Really? I'm a tiger. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.